All right, in this time of uncertainty and all of that other wonderful stuff, let's get into my favorite players from the Florida Panthers, and then I intend to do news of the day video. Looks like it's going to happen after all. Uh, just some stuff I was reading. And then there's an intention to do a live stream today for NHL 20 for the playoffs as we get into round two. Now, one team that's not being discussed in the NHL 20 playoffs is the Florida Panthers, and yet they're one of my top teams when I talk about top favorites. And I'll get more into my favorite teams soon. Uh, there's a video coming up. I'm debating about whether to do my favorite through 16 or just say, you know what, Shannon, bite the bullet and go 1 through 31. And just, you know, wade through all the hate and the down votes. And just because it's kind of fun sometimes to rate your favorite teams 1 through 31. You got to live a little. You just got to, you got to live a little. And, and track last year's and the year before's and track who's moving up and who's moving down. All right. So... Uh, number 15 on this list of my all-time favorite members of the Florida Panthers. Honorable mention to Frankie Vitrano. Honorable mention to Paul Laws. Paul Laws doesn't end up in the top 15, and Frankie Vitrano really hasn't been in Florida long enough for me to justify having him in the top 15. Colton Sevier gets an honorable mention as well. And a great thank you to the Florida Panthers for continuing to employ players from teams that I cheer for when those teams have let them go. Dallas, Boston, Vancouver, they... They take them all. So, number 15 on this list. So, why Mark Pesek? Because this year, Mark Pesek showed he could play forward if he needed to. Uh, one thing that makes me cheer for a player is seeing him uh, change his game and, and say, okay, so there's no room for me on the blue line, or all right, you guys want me to try forward? Got it. I'll do it. And so Pesic's done that and made himself more important to the Florida Panthers. So uh, kudos to him. And so I have him at number 15 overall. Number 14. Oh, honorable mention to Aaron Eckblad, who didn't quite make the cut either. Uh, 14. Phil Lindsay, hardworking player who played roughly 500 games for the Florida Panthers, uh, was one of just those those hardworking blue collar players that made up that Florida Panthers team in '96 that went to a Stanley Cup final, and really showed that that a blue collar team can come together, and you don't necessarily have to have a superstar, although they had one in net, but you don't necessarily have to have that superstar forward to get there. You just have to have everybody buy in, and it's a team effort. And Bill Lindsay was a big part of that. Oh, Brian Scrudland should get an honorable mention as well. I, I honestly could have just made this top 15 players from the 96 team because it was very in inspiring to watch them. Even though at times it could be some boring hockey, I was very impressed with how they all bought in and played together as a team. Number 13. Number 13. Eh. I'm not going to get into how I broke my rules for this list and why, but I will when we get there. Number 13. Keith Yandel, a defenseman that I think doesn't get as much attention as he should, probably gets more criticism from the fans than he should at times. Is is he one-dimensional? No, I don't think he's one-dimensional. Does he need some rounding out to his game? Probably, but he's a pretty good defenseman, and he's done really well in Florida. You can kind of go down to Florida and be somewhat anonymous, and that's kind of how it's worked with Yandel, where he's he's been an anonymous defenseman on a defense that's not bad. I mean, it's... And again, when you look at the overall numbers of recent goaltenders, uh, it's it's been kind of scary, and, and there's people who blame the blue line for that, but I, I don't think it's all on... Yandel, Ekblad, and, and such. I, I think there's there's some blame to go around. But Yandel ends up 13 on my list. Number 12. Um, yeah, I'll put this one at 12. Rob Niedermeyer. When Rob Niedermeyer was drafted, there were a lot of superstar discussions with him and all the goals he was going to score all the points he was going to get and then it was pretty obvious right out of the gate that he wasn't going to be that player at the nhl level and you know what he reinvented himself he was a pretty good bottom six forward and 
he proved over the years that he could be a, a, a very good, solid support player. And by reinventing his game, again, there are plenty of first-round draft picks that come in with high expectations and then end up out of the league. Rob Niedermeyer didn't. So while he never really lived up to that potential, the, when they drafted him as early as they did, he, he had showed prior to that. Still, excellent player for the Florida Panthers for a good long while there. Uh, number 11. Stu Barnes. I can't not have Stu Barnes on the list. When Stu Barnes went to Florida, nobody said a whole lot about it. Nobody expected the goals from him that he scored, or the key goals either. And when they went to that Stanley Cup Finals, uh, Stu Burns was one of their top scorers. He was a pretty darn solid player for them. Now, of course, they got swept aside by the Colorado Avalanche, who looked and went, oh, this nice blue-collar team you've sent us. No. And just shoved him aside. But that being said, Barnes really was a key player for them getting to the Stanley Cup Finals. And he played pretty well. He did. And he showed that offense that um, made him one of my favorite players. Uh, not just in Florida. I don't think he shows up in any of the other favorites lists I've done thus far. But there are a couple in the top 10 for Florida that are in my favorites on other teams because they kind of have to be. Number 10. So one thing Florida's always had going for them is pretty big name goaltending. It, it feels like they've almost always had a pretty big name between the pipes. And Thomas Vokun played pretty well for them as well. Uh, again, there's been no playoff success since 96, so it's easy to kind of overlook some of these players. Uh, and, and speaking of which, honorable mention to Stephen Weiss, who, yeah, didn't make my top 15, and I looked at it, and I thought, you know, he played more games as a Panther than anybody else, but he wasn't one of my favorites. So, throw him in as an honorable mention, but Vokun gets on the board. Vokun was a pretty good goaltender for them for a while, and he was one of many pretty good goaltenders that they've had there. Uh, number nine. So number nine on the list. Oh, can't put him there. Yeah, we'll put him here. When you see a player coming back into the NHL who pre played previously, goes to the KHL and comes back, Evgeny Dadanov is a guy who did that better than anybody else. He came back better. And he came back and, and proved that he was worth every penny that Florida was giving him. So while everybody made this big deal about Gusev and how great Gusev was going to be once he came over to play for Vegas, of course he ends up being traded to New Jersey. Meanwhile, Dadunov comes back, plays for Florida, and plays a really solid top six role. So uh, that's that's why I have Dadunov on the list. Pretty, pretty solid second go around for him. And it's why sometimes letting him go to the KHL can be the best thing for him. Just let him go home. Play a little bit there. Don't complain. Don't get all upset. Just let him go home. Let him play back there. And then we'll figure it out. Number eight. So, Pavel Burry was in the top, top, ten, top 15 list for my favorite Canucks. Uh, and here he is for the Florida Panthers. Now, the the one thing with Pavel was when he went to Florida, he proved he could still score. He proved he could stay healthy for at least a little bit there before injuries took over again. I was I was happy to see Pavel happy again is basically the thing. We didn't know in Vancouver at the time that he was traded out of Vancouver how miserable he was or why. We didn't know just how much behind the scenes was, was ugly for him. And... You know, it's definitely something I can explore in future videos. I got a notice from Amazon. I actually went through and, and found a whole bunch of NHL books that were on sale last week. So I went, well, I know Amazon's delayed on delivery, but I'm going to order all these books. All of them are arriving on Monday. So Monday, I have five new books arriving for the bookshelf. And it's kind of in the middle of everything. And I know Burray's not in one of those books, but definitely I'll be diving nose first into some of those books. And probably be doing more in-depth stuff and Burray is a fascinating story because what happened behind the scenes with him in Vancouver uh it wasn't great and it didn't make the Canucks look very good but at the time he went to Florida we as Canuck fans have kind of been like you know he's kind of selfish and he had that one year that he was just like looked miserable out there and 
the effort didn't seem to be the same, and then we understood later. But yeah, if Bure for me ends up at number eight. It was nice to see him back among the top scorers in the league again. Number seven. How can you have Ole Jokinen at seven? He's number one on my list. I think you should have Jokinen at four. The fact that he's not higher than that in your favorites list shows you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, yes. Ole Jokinen for me is at number seven. And yeah, Jokinen, a very good forward for them for a long time. It was it was theft when they got him in trade. Jokinen bounced around the league a bit, but he had his, his, his greatest success in Florida. And it was it was kind of nice to see him prove other general managers that had given up on him wrong. And prove Florida right for having some faith in him. So, yeah, Jokinen, uh, for me, ends up at the number seven spot on this overall list of favorites. All right, so we're up to number six. Number six on the overall favorites list. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, 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 five. All right, number six. If you want to know why uh, people throw rats on the ice uh, in, in Florida, ask Scott Mellonby. started with him. Uh, Scott Mellonby really was the leader of that team that went to the Stanley Cup Finals in 96. And actually, really excellent player that, you know... Uh, I think in today's game, Mellonby's one of those guys that I, I really think would have excelled. Uh, he, he kind of had a little bit of everything to his game. And yeah, he in, in my eyes, he was he was the leader of that team. I know he wasn't the captain, but to me, he was kind of the leader of that team. Um, the captain's not always like the all like the above them all leader of the team. I, I know they were the C and we talk about their leadership and everything, but there are times where the guy who's captain isn't necessarily the guy who's and Mellonby. It felt like that Florida team though had a lot of captains. Like you could just throw the C on Scrudlin and then go, but really well Scrudlin has this, you guys are all kinda you know, equally is sort of like what you see in Vegas now where okay, you guys are all equally responsible for how this team's doing. Uh number five. You know, it's funny, when Ed Jovanovski was drafted, uh, there was a lot of excitement, and then that was kind of dampened, and then he ends up in Vancouver, and then he ends up back there. Uh, Jovanovski, absolutely an amazing defenseman, uh, could do everything. Uh, Jovo Kopp was fantastic. And again, it shows that, that, that relationship between Vancouver and Florida that has gone back for many, many years, pretty much right to the start of Florida's run in the NHL, uh, when Vancouver was nice enough to have Van Beesbrook to gift to them. I, I, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make sure they don't get Kay Whitmore by giving them John Van Beesbrook. Has anybody thought this through? No. Okay. All right. Good then. We don't know that Beezer would want to play in Vancouver, but then we could trade him for something else. Kids, there's any nobody's thinking the Ducks want Whitmore. The Ducks would take Whitmore instead of Van Beesbrook. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, that was a conversation I had plenty back back in the mid '90s. But Jovanovski was one of those early draft picks for, for Florida, and he ended up being part of the Burry deal. So, you know, Jovanovski, one of my favorites. Burry was a pretty popular trade for me. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, number four. The Kay Whitmore thing just sounds ridiculous now. But even then, it was one of those, what, seriously? We're doing this. We're okay. All right. We're going to hand you John Van Beesbrook, and you got to promise to leave Kay Whitmore alone. Oh, okay. We'll just take this Van Beesbrook. You sure about that? Number four. Is there something wrong with them? <laughs> Number four. Uh, I'm going to have Roberto Luongo at number four. I'm going to explain why. Roberto Luongo, for me, his time with Vancouver was fantastic and great and all that for the most part. I know there were some games people will point to. But as a Panther, early on in his career, he had some great numbers. Towards the end of his career, he put up a couple of really good seasons in Florida. My fandom of Luongo is more related to his time in Vancouver than Florida. So, one thing when I'm trying to count down my favorite members of a certain team is, so how important was their time with that team? 
Right? So, yeah, Luongo for me goes at four because the players I have from three through one At three of Jonathan Huberto. And Jonathan Huberto right now, for me, is the most underrated Panther. Because everybody says Barkov. It's always Barkov. But Barkov's really underrated. I agree, Barkov's underrated. What do you think? I think Barkov's underrated. So we all agree that Barkov's underrated. Which means he's not underrated because we're all agreeing that he's pretty darn good. How about that Huberto? Oh yeah, he's not bad. Yeah, no, Huberto's really good. And so for me right now, he's the most underrated member of the team. Number two, Alexander Barkov, which I think, yeah, it's KS. I've seen it spelled with an X. I've seen it spelled KS. KS is the one that I see more often than X, but I've seen it both ways. Alexander Barkov. Again, I don't qualify him as the most underrated forward right now, but man, when he goes when he goes into what I call beast mode, where he's just got the puck and it's like, all right, so everybody just wait until he decides what he's going to do with it because you're not getting it. He is very, very strong on the puck. And he can be tough in the corners too. Like he goes in there after a puck carrier, he'll come up with it and you have no idea how he got it, but he got it. And yeah, for me, Barkov and Huberto are the reason that I keep trying to pick Florida to make the playoffs, and yet they keep not making it. But I'm going to continue every year. It's going to be a tradition now. THG picks Florida to make the playoffs, and they're going to somehow find a way to miss. And it's not going to be Huberto or Barkov's fault that they don't make it. But eventually, at some point, something's going to give, and we'll see something change. But these guys right now are very they are underpaid. Uh, Barkov was underappreciated. I think he's fully appreciated now. Underappreciated is Huberto. So there you go. And a number one, which really shouldn't surprise anybody at this stage because of how much I've talked about him. Yeah, I still can't believe that happened. New York Rangers trade him to the Canucks, and the Canucks go, oh, good. Now we don't have to worry about losing Kay Whitmore. And I liked Kay Whitmore. I did. I really, really did. He was a good backup goaltender at the time. But, man, Beezer. Uh, John Van Beesbrook gave the Florida Panthers immediate respectability as an expansion team. He dragged them to a pretty darn good record as an expansion team. And he got them to the Stanley Cup Finals in 96. He absolutely rejuvenated his career in Florida before uh, Marc-Andre Fleury made it sexy again. And Van Beesbrook, again... Absolutely tremendous. I think he played his best hockey in Florida. I would put it ahead of his hockey when he was with the New York Rangers. And that mask, right? One of the great masks as well. Simple, very simple mask, but really, really stands out. And so for me, John Van Beesbrook's number one. And, you know, Luongo goes down to fourth because to me, Huberto and Barkov and what they're doing right now is absolutely fantastic. Uh, love those guys. And again, Beezer's just, it's its that ultimate for that 96 run. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Now, I'm not explaining why Radic Dvorak isn't in here. I These are my favorite players, so Dvorak just, just didn't, didn't end up in the list. But, again, let me know your thoughts and your favorites. This whole thing started with an idea of, hey, then people can tell me who their favorites are and it'll be fun. It's not meant to be an overly serious thing. But, hey... Let me know how seriously you take it. Remember, stay home if you can. Stay as safe as you can right now. And, uh, you know, uh, things are things are, are, are changing and, and happening at a, a, a rapid pace while we're all still at home. So, you know, yeah, just keep an eye on things. Keep your hands nice and clean. And, hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.